Okay, in uh, this lesson, we will be looking at an academic IELTS reading section. Um, this material is taken from AE Help's uh, curriculum book. Uh, this is Reading Passage 2 from page 133 called Why Study Philosophy. In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the specific skills that you need to use uh, for questions like list of headings, um, uh, paragraph uh, completion, and multiple choice um, during the exam. So we will try to do this um, fairly similar to the real exam situation, so in uh, 20 minutes um, plus a bit of time uh, for some explanation. All right. Um, so let's have a look at this passage. Again, this material is coming from uh, uh, AE Help's curriculum book. So if you would like to see more material like this, uh, please visit us at uh, www.aehelp.com. Okay, so now turn to page 132 in the curriculum book. And uh, remember, the first step um, when we're doing um, a reading is to have a quick look at the uh, uh, questions to see which questions are okay to read and which questions we should just wait to look at until after we read the passage. So, um, the first question in reading passage two uh, is a list of headings question. Now, with list of headings, uh, it's okay to skim read um, even though there's some extra information because this will give you a general idea of the reading passage. So list of headings, reasons as the basis for knowledge, the relation between reasons and math, the end goals of empirical pursuits, is Socrates a man or immortal, philosophy as the pursuit of knowledge and truth, math versus reason, the differences, uh, using the right tool, Essential debate in education, the lack of practicality as philosophy's downfall, the value of education and practice, and purity as beauty. Okay, great. So clearly uh, this passage will be about philosophy and what is philosophy and why is philosophy studied. Uh, now if we flip to uh, the next questions, we see that the next one is a completing the summary. Again, remember, completing the summary, um, all of this information is paraphrased from the passage, so it's a good one to skim read real quickly. Uh, again, you don't have to read in detail, you don't need to understand it all, just quickly skim read the question. Philosophy teaches us how to reason, which in turn can help us deconstruct something. Students schooled in the percepts of reason are able to differentiate between an argument which follows from the given uh, premises and one that does not and is something force of opinion has no impact on the something of the opinion this is because forcefulness is the wrong something for the job of convincing someone of a viewpoint in physical battles the correct implement is blank in discursive arguments it is blank alone which leads to truth Okay, then after this I'm looking at question 25 and 26, so this is on page 135 again. Um, I can see right away that this is multiple choice, so I will not read the multiple choice uh, question uh, simply because it's going to confuse me. There are at least uh, three wrong answers there, so I'm going to leave that one till after I'm done uh, reading the passage. Okay, so now uh, my next step is to go back and have a look at the title of this passage. The title of the passage is Why Study Philosophy? So, of course, it's a question here, and we need to think about, again, the what, the why, and the how. So, some good critical thinking about the topic. So, what is philosophy? Well, philosophy um, is uh, a little bit different from science. Um, it doesn't look for as much empirical or uh, visible evidence. Uh, instead, um, it's based on arguments, on ideas, on possibilities, um, on possible realities, and on just different ways to uh, understand the same idea or same uh, topic between speakers. 
So why study philosophy? Well, as most of us probably heard at some time, um, philosophy is considered the grandfather of science. So uh, this means um, that uh, studying philosophy is an important skill for developing our knowledge and our ability to develop uh, thought and, and, and science. And how? Well, um, if we think of some examples in the past of um, people uh, debating about maybe being able to fly, uh, and eventually this happened, we built an airplane. So um, some arguments, some debates that create ideas such as flight, and then eventually this becomes a type of reality. So, all right, we've thought about the topic, we collected some good information, we prepared our mind to uh, understand this information well as we read. So now um, let's read the uh, passage and um, answer the questions. The first question that we're going to answer is the list of headings. Now, list of headings is the only question that you should answer as you read, okay? Every other question you should answer after you have finished reading. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, techniques during the uh, reading Uh, section in the exam. Okay, and the first technique here is list of headings. Now, the list of headings, um, if we think about uh, this question, we realize that it's trying to find the what answer. So, what is each paragraph about? Again, if you look at questions, simplify them. Is it a what question? Is it a why question? Is it a how question? This, this makes it more easy to figure out the correct answer. So, these are what questions. Simply asking, what is the paragraph about? Or, what is the best title for the paragraph, okay? So the first point here is the it's the only question that you should answer as you read. And um, the way to do this is um, after you finish reading a paragraph, don't look at the answers, just simply ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? Give the answer yourself and then find the answer which matches closest to your own answer and that will probably be the correct answer. So uh, you'll see this in a, a minute. So the correct technique is um, read a paragraph and Ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? So <clears throat> ask yourself this question, then give an answer, and then find the correct match. Let's see how this works with our example passage. Okay. Paragraph A. There are two schools of thought when it comes to education. One side believes that education should give students tools for success in life, while the other side believes that education itself is an important goal. No area of study brings this debate to a head more than the study of philosophy. Philosophy, for those who belong to the practical side of the debate, is another waste of time. 
Philosophy provides very few tools for success in life, they say. A common question for someone studying philosophy is, what are you going to do with it? Those on the other side of the debate, those who value education for knowledge itself, can see that the study of philosophy has many important benefits. Then I stop and I ask myself, what is this paragraph about? Okay. Uh, as from the paragraph, especially the beginning, that's where we see the answers to the what questions. Um, this paragraph is about two different beliefs. Um, one, that um, education should be to teach skills for success, and the other, that education should teach knowledge um, for its own purpose. So that's what this paragraph is about. Okay, let's look at the list of headings and then let's see if any of them match uh, what um, I just said. So one, reasons as the basis for knowledge, no. The relation between reasons and math, no. End goals of empirical pursuits, no. Is Socrates man or a mortal, no. Philosophy as the pursuit of knowledge and truth, no. Math versus reason, the differences. Using the right tool. A central debate in education. That one seems to be correct because debate means argument and the argument here is what is the goal of education. So here I'm going to choose the Roman numeral 8 or VIII -I as my correct answer. Okay and I don't cross it out because perhaps it will be a better answer for a different paragraph but right now for me it looks like for paragraph 8 the best answer is V-I-I-I. -I -I. So <clears throat> the example here is paragraph A. Uh, describes two different beliefs. Therefore, the, the best answer is a central debate in uh, philosophy. Okay, now let's go through the rest of the passage, stopping after each paragraph and repeating the same technique, asking ourselves, what is the paragraph about, giving an answer, and then matching the best answer with our own answer. Again, remember that usually the, um, the answers come from the uh, top part of the paragraph, not always, but usually, because that's where the what information or the topic sentence is given. Okay, so <clears throat> let's have a look at that. All right, uh, paragraph B. The word philosophy derives from the Greek word uh, love of wisdom. Just as it was in ancient Greece, it is those people who love wisdom, knowledge, and truth who study philosophy. However, we do not live in ancient Greece, where people had slaves to do all of their chores, such as working in the fields. So what place does philosophy have in today's society? Okay, so what is this uh, paragraph about? Um, this paragraph is about the definition of philosophy, which is um, the love of wisdom or the love of truth. Okay, let's look at the answers. Reason as the basis of knowledge, no. The relation between reason and math, no. The end goals of empirical pursuit, is Socrates man or mortal? Philosophy as the pursuit of knowledge and truth. Um, that looks right because it's the definition and that matches with this topic. So I'm going to choose the Roman numeral 5, V. Philosophy as the pursuit of truth, uh, of knowledge and truth. Okay, um, let's look at paragraph C. If philosophy teaches us anything, it teaches the ability to reason. With reason, one can construct, analyze, and find faults in arguments. For example, if all men are mortal, and Socrates is mortal, 
Is Socrates a man? What if we change the question to, if all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, is Socrates mortal? Once a student is schooled in the ability to reason, he will see right away that these two questions are very different. As it turns out, the first is an invalid argument, while the second is very much valid. Perhaps the next question of the skeptic is, what is the value of reason? This is a very important question. Surely, if philosophy is all about learning and re to reason, then an ability to reason must be a valuable trait. Arguably, the ability to reason forms the foundation for all knowledge. Okay, so what is this paragraph about? Um, this paragraph is about the importance of the ability to reason. So it gives the example of Socrates, but that's more of a how. This is a little bit of a tricky paragraph where the how comes before the what. So careful with this type of paragraph. Here if I ask myself, what is it about? then the answer is about the purpose or the value of reason. So let's have a look at the list of headings. Um, first one, reason as the basis for knowledge. And that seems to be right away the correct answer because this paragraph is talking about the fact that reason is valuable because it is the method or the way to seek and find knowledge. So I'm not even going to continue, I'm going to choose uh, I or Roman numeral one here and go on. Okay, the next paragraph, paragraph D. So to watch the rest of this video and for more practice materials like this, as well as interactive lessons, please visit us at www.aehelp.com. If you have any questions, just let us know.